Last time, we established some tools for talking about where an object is and how long it takes for a particular motion to occur. So the next more complicated thing that we can try to um, talk about when it comes to describing motion is we want to think about how fast an object is going. Okay, and if you think about that, what we really mean when we talk about how fast something is going is an, a faster object is able to go further in the same time interval than an object that's slower. So those are the two pieces of information that are going to go into this. Um, how far did the object go? And in how much time? And we'll be able to use those two pieces of information to figure out how fast the object is going. Um, so the most basic way to use these is to calculate what we call an average velocity. So an average velocity, which I'm just going to write as um, velocity v with a little um, average subscript. And the average velocity is just the change in position, delta x, over the time interval, delta t. Okay, and the average velocity is in fact a vector because this um, change in position is a vector. Um, so the way that we calculate this then is we just take this change in position, which remember we call the displacement, and we divide that by the time interval. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. We just take the um, two numbers, divide them, and that gives us a measure of how fast an object is going. Okay, so how do we calculate a displacement? Let's just review this really quickly. So let's say that we have a situation where we have an object that starts out at some position, which remember, position is a vector, so I'll represent that with an arrow. We can think of that as being relative to the origin. So I'll call this first position x1, and then later it's at some other position, which I'll call x2. Okay, so two different locations because the object has moved. And how do we find the change in position when we have these two different vectors? Well, it's really quite simple. Um, what we want to do is using pirate map rules, we want to imagine that we go from x1 to x2. So that means that we're going to follow a path kind of like this. And that will give us the change in position vector or the displacement. Um, so the way I like to think about this is x1 plus the change in position gives me x2. I think that's the easiest, most intuitive way to understand changes in position. Um, but you can also just use the sort of standard changes final minus initial. So you can algebraically rearrange this. Um, delta x equals x2 minus x1. Right, so both of those are equivalent. Um, you can use whichever one makes the most sense to you. Um, okay, so one really important thing to notice here is that velocities have a direction. So we're not just saying how fast, but also how fast and in which direction. Um, okay, so um, the average velocity gives us some um, information about the overall motion. But when we talk about how fast something's going, we usually want to know um, how fast it's going in a really short period of time. Um, so the information that you get when you look at the speedometer in your car. So in that case, what we want is instantaneous velocity. Um, and uh, instantaneous is inconvenient to say. So sometimes we'll just say velocity. Um, if someone just says velocity, you can always assume they mean instantaneous velocity rather than average velocity. And this is just the average velocity, but over a really short time period. So um, the velocity with no subscript is just equal to the limit as delta t gets really, really small. So delta t goes to zero of delta x over delta t. Okay, so it's the same as average velocity. We just make delta t really, really small. Um, a way to write this is we can just think of this as the derivative of the position with respect to time. Okay, so um, the derivative of the position is the velocity or the instantaneous velocity. Um, okay, so that's the one that we normally think of um, when you talk about how fast something is going. We're not interested in averaging the entire trip. We just want to know, okay, right now I'm going 70 miles per hour. Okay, um, there are a couple other uh, words and a couple other um, slight differences that we use to talk about speeds. So one that might be interesting in some cases is the average speed. Okay, so um, the reason that average velocity is not always um, interesting to talk about is because if you have a motion that repeats or an object eventually ends up where it started, then the displacement over the entire motion is zero. You ended up in the same place you started, so you haven't moved, um, which means that um, your average velocity in that case would be zero. Um, so it's kind of counterintuitive to imagine something like a NASCAR race where um, cars are moving really fast for a really long time, but then their average velocity is basically zero. Um, so average speed can account for that. Um, what we talk about for average speed is just the total path length. So this can be the length of a race, for instance, divided by the time interval. Okay, so total distance divided by total, total time, um, and there's your average speed. Um, another one that we are often interested in is the instantaneous speed. Or again, just speed. If someone just says speed, you can assume they mean instantaneous rather than average. Um, and that's just going to be the magnitude of the velocity. So the velocity, but ignoring the direction. Um, and as a reminder, one way that we can write the magnitude of a vector is just by um, taking the arrow off of it. So if you see a V, that is the symbol for speed. 
and I'll try pretty hard to be consistent and always use speed and velocity correctly. Um, speeds do not contain a vector, um, or they do not contain a direction, they're just a, a magnitude, where velocities have both a magnitude and a direction every time. Um, the units for any of these three things, instantaneous speed, um, instantaneous velocity, average velocity, average speed, are all the same. The units are always just going to be units of distance, which are meters, divided by units of time, which are seconds. So our only unit of speed in this class is going to be meters per second, but some other ones that come up in everyday life are uh, miles per hour, for instance.